What movie are you never watching again? Bridge to Terabithia. If you have watched it, you will know why. I was on a plane with this as the on-flight movie. I hadn't read the book or knew anything about it and decided to read my book. I look up during the flight and everyone with headphones on is crying around me. I had no idea what was happening and thought I missed an announcement or something I. E. The plane is going down. Nope. All these people were crying about the movie. An amp. Hash X200B. This is back when they only showed one movie per flight. I remember watching Inglorious on my laptop on a bus trip with a friend once and looking up to see everyone else crying to lay miserables. Birdemic. Shock and terror. Everybody should watch it once and then never again. This movie is a American classic. Where else will you see the world's best salesman give a client a 50% discount on a million dollar sale? My favorite part is the lead up to that. What would it take to win your business today? Quote, they already gave you their price. Why did you cut it in half? Compliance. The story is about a prank call, pretending to be a cop, who gets the staff of a fast food place to do degrading things to each other. It really is worth watching once because it feels very real, but it is very disturbing. Based on a true story, unbelievable that something like that could be allowed to happen because someone doesn't question a strange atuation. Marley and Me It was not the feel-good comedy movie the trailers made it out to be. Dude. Same. I went to see it on a first first date with some dude and made him take me home immediately after the movie so I could hold my dog. I didn't hear back from him, but my dog is still here smiley face. That, dear Zachary, documentary, good lord, yes, this movie was so well done, holy, I was a mess after, kids, stared at the wall numbly after it ended, I have no legs, tusk, I'd rather rewatch Human Centipede before rewatching that fucked up brainchild of Kevin Smith underscore 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 spoilers below if you want to see the movie skip this underscore 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 i can see why people find the movie disturbing and i would never act like my opinion is fact or somehow overrules any inferior opinion about a piece of art but i just thought that movie was so so stupid it's got a good monster movie vibe in a couple spots. But the holes of logic are so big you can yell the word stupid into them and have it echo back for the entire duration of the show. The ending ruins it for me to be honest. I get that you have to have some suspension of disbelief for any movie like that. But it got so stupid at the end I just lost all interest in seeing it again. It's like I imagine whatever emergency service or policemen show up and see this guy after the thing that happened to him and go, Jesus Christ Johnny, this guy has has been surgically deformed to look like a walrus. He can barely speak because he was mentally abused and manipulated into acting like an animal. We need to get to him to a master surgeon or some kind of specialized care home. Nah that's too much work. Let's drag this physically and mentally fucked guy to a zoo and just let him live there like an actual literal walrus in a cave with a small pool next to it and let people visit and ogle him. It's not like they'll raise any questions about the light brown mutant animal with surgical stitches across his entire body who clearly has human eyes. He's probably gonna be fed mainly fish, which any human would die off because they're not getting any of the other nutrients they need. But it's not like this is the single most retarded thing anyone's ever suggested we do to someone who was forcefully operated into a giant costume made of human skin after their legs were amputated. Plus it'll save us enough time to go for an early lunch. Good point Johnny. Alright, time to drag the man walrus off. Four tenths. Interesting concepts but weird and stupid execution. Underscore, 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 spoilers end here. Underscore, 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 underscore.
underscore 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 Eragon I quit right after Sephira was born it physically hurt to see her grow up in a two minutes and tell Eragon his fate or whatever they couldn't have just made it a time skip they had to make her age super fast they really felt it was Necesari, a Serbian film this year. Wish I hadn't seen it the first time. From the wiki, showing a film of a woman giving birth to a newborn baby, which is then immediately raped by Rasa, much to the joy of the mother. Yup, I'm out. Not even morbidly curious. Weirdly, a Serbian film sounds worse in the plot summary than it actually is on film this year. While undoubtedly pretty grisly, it's almost silly in practice and not all that believably realistic. I wouldn't recommend it, but more because it's just a bit than because it's uniquely disgusting. It's intentionally creating a bit of a caricature of that kind of film this year. I don't think it really works. Being ironically brutal and stupid is still brutal and stupid, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Schindler's List. Great film, but very hard to watch. We were just talking about it at work. I can't imagine a time when I would think, oh, you know what sounds good to watch right now? Schindler's List. Knowing how horrible it is has actually been the reason I haven't been able to bring myself to watch it at all. Boy in the striped pajamas surprised me but I know how Schindler's List is. Nightcrawler. Really well done. And Jake Gyllenhaal absolutely killed it in the role. But it left me so uncomfortable I don't think I could sit through it again. Nightcrawler is in my top 10 for sure. Jake Gyllenhaal is incredible and can play a creep so well. The Human Centipede. Never again. Human Centipede 2 is the real horror here. If you think 2 is bad there is a third that is so much worse. It takes place at a prison and there are 100 participants. What dreams may come, while I really like the concept of it, and it aligns really closely to what I think the afterlife is like, I cried the entire way through that movie, and I will never not be devastated about Robin Williams. I really wanted to see that movie as a kid but could never convince my mom to rent it, so I saw it for the first time this past year and it is rough watching it after Robin Williams's actual death, especially with the mythology in the movie about suicide. Gorgeous film though. After after reading a handful of comments on this thread my interest has peaked and now I'm left with the list of movies people have watched and will never watch again that I haven't even heard of. Grave of the Fireflies. I don't know if I can watch it again, but it did save me from falling deeper into a depressive episode. I'd seen it before and knew it was a certified trip to the onion cutting factory. I was in a bad spell, but didn't know how bad until I watched the movie again without shedding a tear. Called the doctor the next day to get an appointment to get back on brain meds. I'm so glad you realized how dark it had gotten, and reached out to turn on the light. I hope things have stayed better for you. I spit on your grave because gross. The happening, because I felt my brain chills dying and I'll never get that hour of my life back. Ha ha, I'm right with you on the happening. I watched it in a theater and remember one really odd scene where Mark Wahlberg walks up to an old lady sitting on a porch. She croaks out really loudly. I see you e y e b a l l i n. my lemon drank, which for some reason set me off in hysterics. Such a terrible movie. Manchester by the Sea. It's an excellent movie. Great acting, writing, direction, and beautiful cinematography, but it's the type of movie you can only watch once. Such a haunting movie to watch. I felt so unsettled for days after. Blue Valentine and Amp. Hash X200B. I love the Goslinger, but that movie is depressing. Seriously, most depressing movie ever. He in the Shower is a horror show. She clearly didn't want to be there and he knew it and it made him more desperate. Requiem for Adrea Monsieur. There are other miserable films like Son of Saul and Synecdoche, New York that I love which depressed me but nothing compared to feeling dizzy and close to throwing up at the ending of Requiem Monsieur. It was one of the best movies I've ever watched, and I did re-watch it once as an adult to be sure. But that is enough for me. It hurts too much. It is amazing, but it hurts.
I highly recommend watching it once though. Oh yeah, train spotting can be added to the list but that is also something you're only going to watch once. Strange that I've seen train spotting multiple times and overall enjoy it rather than struggle through it. Might be down to the comedy and the fact I know plenty of people like the characters in real life. I have Scottish roots so it feels very familiar. It's definitely a dark one though. I would never call it a comedy, but I think there's enough genuine hilarity that balances out the stuff. Stuff. Whereas Requiem is just miserable and only gets worse. Great films though. Downsizing. First time I ever fell asleep at the cinema. I heard this movie was 1% interesting plot idea. You know, with downsizing, the actual name of the movie, and 99% some other really boring rom-com with Matt Damon and a janitor. I haven't seen it, but I don't want to. The Emoji Movie. I watched it knowing that it would be cringy, but I wasn't prepared for how bad it was going to be. I see this a lot but the emoji movie isn't bad it's mediocre as which makes viewing it a slog but it isn't some comically bad masterpiece that brings about the apocalypse it's just a boring kids movie i think that makes it worse martyrs it's an excellent horror movie that really makes you think while punching you gut and playing with your intestines i watched this twice first time alone and was completely satisfied a real experience of a movie i thought second time i watched with people to see their reactions and discuss it afterwards with it fresh in mind. One of my favorite movies for sure. Holmes and Watson. Can't believe this hasn't been listed yet. Probably not listed because hardly anyone saw it in the first place. The Lovely Bones. Joker. The movie was fantastic and really put you in the mindset of someone who was experiencing an unavoidable degradation of their mental state. But everything about that movie was done so well that it made me feel a constant sense of dread and anxiety, as if things were guaranteed to get worse. I agree. I watched it twice, and the second time really left me feeling dread, because oh my god that could actually be something that could happen in real life. Joaquin Phoenix did a great job playing someone with mental illness, and it really made me empathize with anyone who has to put up with that kind of stuff. That movie definitely had me leaving the theater shell-shocked both times. IDK was thinking of watching Sharknado again but I'll probs just give up. Suicide Squad. What an incoherent, ridiculous fact. I think what makes it worse is there was real promise there at one point. The cutscenes from a video game cropped together into a movie. Saw 2. The Pit of Needles traumatized me. LOL.